Hey, so uh, 2020 sucked. But some shoes released, so let's talk about those. It didn't actually hurt. I just am awkward on camera. Hi, welcome to the channel. <laughs> I'm SB Mitch. Uh, you can give me a follow on social media. You can subscribe to the channel if you want or do none of those things. I don't really care. Um, it's really up to you. Hello, pants. Uh, welcome to the top five, I guess. There's three top five lists, if that makes sense. I'm not doing a top 10 list. I'm doing three top five lists because top 10 list would be too short of a video anyway. There were some good sneakers that came out this year and I think it's worth mentioning, um, but given the fact that number one, it's an SB themed channel, we're gonna talk mostly about SBs, but, um, and keep in mind too, these are just my opinions. Nothing about my opinions are anything close to factual. And when I'm telling you about sneakers that I think are worthy of top five of the year, I don't take into account like how they, we how they wear with a fit, cause I don't care or like materials really that much. I'm colorway over everything kind of guy. So I'm not sitting here trying to make my top five list look like anyone else's or ooh, look how edgy or Howard Stern stupid blech, I am. Like this is just what I think are good shoes. So first of the three top fives are the top five non SB releases of the year. There are a couple releases that I wouldn't put in the top five, but I think they're definitely worth mentioning. Um, one of them being the Dunk Low Kodot JP Ugly Duckling Pack that retroed this year. It was just really nice to see Nike do an okay job on probably the best Kodot JP uh, pack that's ever released. What else? Oh, the Jordan 13 Flint Retro. I think this just deserved, this needed to be mentioned because of overall demand and just how it looks. I think it's a good looking shoe. Even though I'm not a fan of 13s or Jordans in general, to be honest with you, I just think these are the best looking retro that came out. I keep in mind too, when I'm talking about Jordans, when I say favorite, it's not, a, not at all synonymous with best. So take anything I say about Jordans with a grain of salt. Uh, the initial release of the sustainable line of products that Nike came out with had a really good amount of hype surrounding them. Um, and this 03 model is just something from the future. Like it looks like something from the year 3054. I don't know why I chose that year, but they're definitely futuristic. I've also heard that they're extremely comfortable. And the only reason they're really on this top five list is because they're so unique. Like I've never seen anything like this, especially this year. The Air Max 390 Radiant Red Infrared. Air Max had themselves a year. And this year was also the uh, 25th anniversary of the Air Max 90. So Nike uh, retroed, I guess you could say, a bunch of Air Max 90s with the exact specifications of original releases from 1990. Uh, and even like little details like the box and even the little support things that came with him was just a really nice tip of the cap to Tinker Hatfield and everything he's done for the Air Max line. Plus this is just like probably the most iconic Air Max colorway in general. And the recraft is really comfortable in my opinion. So I, they had to be on this list. I know these came out like a week and a half ago. So it's kind of ridiculous that they're on any kind of top whatever list. Uh, but I also recognize that from a colorway and model standpoint, this is, was a very important sneaker that came out. Plus, just like with the 90s, these were uh, manufactured to original specifications. I just think they look really, really good. Like I have a pair and I kind of want to keep them, even though I have no Air Max 95s in my collection. It's time to give Chris Gibbs some credit because with this release, it's official that Union absolutely slaughters anything that Off-White has ever done with Nike. Both of the colorways of these re that released are very, very good. And there's a lot of like little details that I think, like the folded over tongue, like that's, an, that's a detail that I don't think has ever really been done, but it was something that people do. And by Union doing that, they've already done more for sneakers than Virgil Abloh will ever accomplish. A lot of people didn't like them when they first came out or first saw pictures, but I think this is one of the better releases of the year. These are so good. I personally am drawn to the London colorway a lot more just because it's 
something I dig a little bit more. But these need to be on everyone's like top 10 list at least because if you're talking from like the four major pillars of what makes a good sneaker, you got materials, craftsmanship, colorway, and the story behind it. This knocks all those, all those boxes if you ask me. These are just very good. They're very good looking, super high quality. And even from a like wearability standpoint, they're just very, very good. So th that's definitely why those are my top, those are my number one non-SB release of the year. <laughs> Moving on to SB stuff. Uh, but there are a couple pairs worth mentioning before we get into the list. So one of them being the Civilist Berlin Nike Dunk Low Pro SB collaboration. The, don't get me wrong. This is a cool shoe. The color change thing is very, very cool. But at the same time, it's not really something that's new. Like we saw this gimmick with the uh, Chinatown Market Converse collab from a couple years ago. Another knock on this shoe is like after you wear it a while, it just looks really weird. Like it looks like bent plastic. Brand new, they look great, especially when you activate the uppers. But after wearing them, they just look kind of weird. Also worth mentioning the uh, Concepts Nike Dunk High Tur Duncan only because of the special box, like I'll be honest with you. Concepts always does really good special box releases and this is the epitome of good when it comes to that. Uh, if this didn't have the special box, the Turduncans would probably be one of the most overrated Nike, it would probably be the second most overrated Nike SB release of the year next to the Atlas Lost at Sea Dunk High because those are definitely not on my list. It's an okay shoe, but it's a good shoe because of the box and all the extras that came with it. I'm, I'm personally partial to the yellow pair, but these these three sneakers were the, were the like, I would say most obvious tip of the cap to the legendary jam band that most Nike SB collectors nowadays have probably never heard of or even listened to before. And, uh, and these might not be like wearable for your stupid IG fit picks or whatever, but if you looked at these knowing who the Grateful Dead was, and had nothing, had no idea what sneakers were, you'd be able to tell that this was a Grateful Dead sneaker collaboration. And just for that, I kinda have to put them on this list. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the colorway, and the story personally doesn't re resonate with me, but y'all, I've had these in hand, I didn't keep them, but the leather quality on this release is absolutely crazy. One of the better releases in terms of quality materials that I've seen all year. And especially to be on a Dunk High SB is really impressive. So if this list was based on quality alone, these would probably be number one. That's how good of a quality I think they are. The Travis Scott Nike SB Dunk Low Pro. <laughs> um, regulars know it's no secret that I think Tarvis and his like minions of weird 15 year old white dude fans are just super cornball. And if we're speaking frankly, this sneaker release kind of ruined sneakers for a lot of people, like in a big way. Uh, the sneaker itself is a very, very, it pays a lot of homage to the Houston area, the Houston, Texas area with its materials and colorway. So, I mean, these aren't conceptually groundbreaking, like the whole tearaway aspect and stuff like that, but they didn't look like anything else that came out this year. They were very important to the sneaker world in general, while very annoying to the SB world, very important to the sneaker world. <clears throat> and I don't hate them. I think they're okay looking. I don't like the laces overall as a shoe. I think they're okay. And I think the, the impact they had on the sneaker world is why they're on this list. It's a, it's a collaboration with an ice cream company. Like, are you kidding me? I've never actually had these in hand or even like seen them in person, to be honest with you. But uh, Nike SB really needed something like this. Like. This collaboration has that like playfulness and whimsy of the early 2000s Nike SB line. And that's something they needed for a really, really long time. Like a lot of the collaborations and like shoes that came out this year were very serious compared to these. So the fact that Nike was like, let's do a fun one. Let's do a really fun collaboration. And they did a really good job on it. Speaks volumes. <laughs> these aren't in my top five personal releases because I personally don't really like them that much. Even though the person, Sean Cliver, who did this collaboration, is like the world's biggest dweeb, it is very well done. I mean, the colorway is wearable, but still pretty fun. There's enough details to still make it like an actual Nike SB looking release. And the materials, the quality is just top notch for any Dunk Low Pro that's come out this year. 
And really the only thing you can knock the Strange Loves on is kind of how they were released. Because this release kind of started a domino effect of people that haven't been supporting skate shops throughout the years really hating skate shops for the most part. So there's that. And now we're going to get into the shoes that I, they're like my top five, like personal top five. I only have this Obsidian colorway. Uh, there's other colorways I want to get, but the fact that Nike SB was successfully able to implement React technology into a skateboarding shoe is pretty remarkable. Like the whole reasoning for the Nike SB line is to create sneakers and models with tougher materials that can endure skateboarding. Yes, people skateboard SBs every once in a while. Crazy concept, right? So the fact that you have a shoe that you can do kickflips and ollies in, but also have the insanely comfortable Nike React technology is awesome. And I'm really glad that Nike SB took this leap. Hopefully they do it with more models because uh, if we're being honest, Nike SB hasn't really been about comfort throughout the years. So nice job. This was a general release. So general release usually means general release quality. So quality on these isn't anything to write home about. It's still good, but it's not anything to go crazy about. But I mean, look at it. It's a Jordan 1 Chicago colorway on a Dunk Low Pro SB. What's there not to like about it? And there's, you know, a couple little details like where the eye stay is on the tongue being a little bit lower, kind of like how it was on the 1985 Jordan 1 Chicago. It's a nice little homage to that model. Um, so these are probably the nicest GR quality of any release this year. So that alone, the fact that it's a Chicago colorway, it justifies being on anyone's top whatever list. Every once in a while, an okay shoe can be elevated to a different level with a spectacular story attached to it. This is the epitome of that, in my opinion. The details on this shoe, honoring the ward of Shibuya, um, honoring Hachiko and the Shibuya train station, like like details like even, even the insole, having the, the platform of the train station, um, these being, you know, mo modeled after a bus that takes skaters around Shibuya is just, it's unlike anything we've seen in a long time, especially a skate shop collaboration. So, I mean, aside from that, the colorway is really good. I really like gray and blue uh, and the black outsole. Like this is just a very good release. That's why they're there. Now, hold on. Uh, anyone who knows me through like the channel or sneakers knows that this was probably my most anticipated sneaker of the year. Uh, when pictures of these showed up in like what March or something like that, I was like, book it. That's going to be my number one sneaker of the year. And surprisingly enough, they're not. This shoe is the colorway of my favorite colorway of all time. Like the, the Atmos Elephant Air Max 1 is the best looking shoe of all time in my opinion. The only reason I can't give these number one is because of the inconsistencies with the elephant print. Like you can even see it on my secondary pair. Like look at the difference, like even just side by side, like the inconsistencies with the elephant print, put these at number two for me. I mean, it's still a good shoe, but execution was just kind of not great on these. Execution is why this is number one. Like it's obviously, I mean, if you're an Air, Ma Air Max fan at all, like, you know, this pulls from the 2002 Atmos Air Max one in the Safari colorway. There's just so many great details. The Safari print, the mini swoosh, even the canvas they use on the vamp. The uh, mismatched, ooh, the mismatched swooshes, even the sail colorway of the midsole, like they did a really nice job. I mean, I wear my personal pair like crazy. This is my backup pair because my personal pair is by the door. They look absolutely awesome on foot. They're comfortable. Um, they're tough enough to wear like in the snow and they just don't, they look good even when they're a little bit beat up. So I really wish the elephants were done this well but credit where credit's due. Safaris are definitely the sneaker of the year for me. Again, keep in mind, this is all just opinion. Like none of what I say is factual. I'm sure there were good Jordan releases this year. I'm just not a Jordan guy. I'm just going on based on what I like. And really that's what top whatever lists are. It's never factual. It's what people like and people want to debate about it. That's cool, I guess. It's just, I think it's useless to debate people's opinions because opinions are subjective. Thanks for taking the time to watch this uh, on what, Monday? Yeah, it's Monday. I hope you had a good weekend. I do a speeder box on Friday is $1,500. It's pretty crazy. I opened it already, but it's pretty crazy. So you want to come back for that. If there's any shoes that you think need to be on this list, or if you want to just share your top five list, go for it. I have no problem with that. 
um, I will comment on every single list that shows up there. So thanks again. Have a great rest of your day. And remember to keep sneakers fun because they're supposed to be fun. Bye. Bye.